Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can you turn to your neighbor and uh, wave to them and welcome them to this community worship? You are all most welcome. This is a great, great opportunity for us to meet as a community. One of the important things that we do as Uganda Christian University is that we take off time every Tuesday and every Thursday to meet as a community and to celebrate Christ and to celebrate our life in Christ. It is what makes us UCU. It is what makes us unique. And as students and as members of staff, we need to take this seriously because this is an opportunity that you cannot get anywhere else. And once you have left UCU, you will miss it greatly. I bring you greetings from my dear family. Uh, Lydia is not with us, as you have already been told. She's doing uh, some work in Kampala, but she has sent representatives. The representatives are here. Can you stand up so that you can wave to the people? All those are the representatives of uh, Reverend Lydia, so they are around. And even the young one is around. Yes. Uh, and she really, really loves all of you, and we love all of you. This afternoon, I was asked to talk about something very interesting. Equipped for excellence. You know our, uh, our philosophy and our vision as Uganda Christian University is to be a center of excellence in the heart of Africa. And when you think about that vision, sometimes you can laugh and you can say, how can we have the center of excellence in the heart of Africa here at Uganda Christian University? Because the word excellence is uh, such a deep word. Because if they, somebody told you excellent, I don't think you can find a word that is above excellent in the English language. I am a mathematician, so I'm not very good at English, but I know there are very many lawyers here. They can help me. Is there a word that you can find that is better than excellent? I think it is, uh, it is not there. The words you can find are just equivalent to excellence, but nothing above excellence. So, equipped for excellence. And there is no better text to help us understand excellence than the book of Daniel. Uh, in the book of Daniel, we find this gentleman, Daniel, who is a picture of a healthy Christian. He is a picture of a tried by fire Christian. He is a picture of a Christian who has been tempted. And he is also an illustration of how God rewards men and women who possess an excellent spirit. Let me just get the setting of our text right. Daniel was born about 620 BC. And Daniel must have been about four years old at the time of the great revival in Judah under the king called Josiah. Josiah. This is uh, written in 2 Chronicles 34. And Daniel must have been about 10 years old when this king who had brought about some kind of mini revival died. And at the age of 13, this is when King Nebuchadnezzar deported a number of Jews to Babylon. And a 13-year-old Daniel was among the team that was deported to Babylon. Daniel, as you remember, had three very close friends. And Daniel, when you start to read the book of Daniel, he comes on the scene as a teenager, a 13 year old. And I think many of us here are much older than the 13 year old Daniel. And so, what we are talking about is something that was done by a very youthful personality in Daniel. Daniel, this 13 year old with friends, finds himself about 1,500 miles 
from home. He was exiled about 1,500 miles away from home. If you are to travel from here to any part of Uganda, you cannot beat these 1,500 miles. I think even the distance between here and Nairobi is shorter than this. But interestingly, Daniel served under four different rulers who represented three different kingdoms. Daniel is a picture of how to serve the Lord, how to glorify the Lord, and how to be faithful to the Lord in the land of the enemy. He teaches us how we can possess an excellent spirit. And if you look at that book of Daniel, it is divided, subdivided into 12 chapters. The first six chapters of Daniel are a historical narrative of the life of Daniel, while the last six are prophetic in nature. For today's teaching, I'm going to stick to the first six, the historical narratives. And just to remind you, because I believe that all of us at one time have had the opportunity to read the book of Daniel. In chapter one, we see the teenagers refuse the king's drink and food. In chapter two, we see Daniel interpret the image in the king's dream. In chapter three, we see the three Hebrew boys thrown into the fiery furnace. While in chapter four, again, we see Daniel interpreting a dream about a tree. In chapter five, we see another king in the name of Belshazzar at a feast, but with again another confusing dream. And it is in chapter six of Daniel that we see that Daniel is thrown into a den of lions. The Bible, when you read the Bible in Daniel, it tells us more than once that Daniel was a man who had an excellent spirit. If you read Daniel chapter five, uh, if you can uh, display the ESV, the English Standard Version, the ESV is the one I'm using, but in Daniel chapter 5, verse 12, this is what it says. It says that because an excellent spirit, knowledge and understanding to interpret dreams, explain riddles, and solve problems were found in this Daniel, whom the king named Belshazzar, because an excellent spirit. The Bible is telling us that Daniel had an excellent spirit. And like we have read in Daniel chapter 6, verse 3, they told us that then this Daniel became distinguished above all the other high officials because an excellent spirit was in him. Friends, Daniel had an excellent spirit. But I want to ask myself a question now that what is that excellent spirit? And how can we hope to have the same excellent spirit and attitude that Daniel had? Because if we can have it, that means we shall be a center of excellence in the heart of Africa. You know, they tell us in Luganda that if you come to Kampala, for those who have come to Kampala when they are old, they used to tell us that Kampala Sivizimbe, that Kampala is not buildings but it is the people that are in Kampala that make up Kampala. And I would like to make the same statement that UCU is not buildings and it is not this ground here. But what makes UCU are you the people that dwell in UCU. And so if each and every one of us is excellent, then we shall have a center of excellence. Daniel's spirit was a result of the way he handled himself and the way he treated other people. And the most of all, it was in the manner in which he chose to serve his God. There are key factors that we see in the development of Daniel's character and nature. Perhaps if this afternoon we could choose and we could point out those characters that made Daniel a man with an excellent spirit, then as people we can aspire to develop that same kind of excellent spirit. I want to ask you, do you have an excellent spirit? You can ask your neighbor, do you have an excellent spirit? Let us try and put it to the test. 
using God's word to see indeed whether we have an excellent spirit. So what do we see in Daniel that helped to develop his excellent spirit? First of all, we are told in the Bible that there was no blemish, nothing in the character of Daniel and his friends that would keep him or that would keep them from fulfilling the desires of the king. These boys, the four boys, they were told they had no physical, no mental or emotional problems that would hinder their ability to learn. The Babylonian king, when he was looking for the people to serve in the kingdom, he went out to look for the best of the Hebrew children to be trained in his kingdom. Uh, and though the king, that king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, for him, when he was talking about excellence, and maybe that's the problem we make here, for him, he was looking at the human excellence, the physical excellence. Sometimes when you are looking, if you ask my young girls here, those who are searching, how many people are searching here? Eh? The Archbishop told us that when we are searching, we have to keep our hands up like this. Eh? And nowadays, they call it okwetega. You have to okwetega when you're putting up. But if you ask these young girls that which kind of man are you looking for, they will tell you they want a slender, tall, huh? light-skinned. So they want an excellent man, but in the form of physical attributes, isn't it? I used to be very worried when I was still in school because whenever I would, I would hear what my sisters are looking for, I would fall very short. You know, I was short. Uh, <laughs> I was dark. I thought I would die single. But thank God, I think Lydia was blind. <laughs> and then she chose me. But the king of Babylon for excellence, the king was looking for physical excellence. But I want to tell you, friends, that what God is looking for in us is a spirit of excellence, spiritual excellence, not an excellent body, not even, even though we are told that we should take care of this temple, because this body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. But the Lord is not looking for very handsome young men, very beautiful women, and to say these are excellent. No, he's looking, uh, you know, in Uganda there is that song which Babija sang, which says, Mukama Akebera Muchi. The Lord looks at the heart. He's looking for excellence from the heart, not from outside appearance. Praise the Lord. And so if we understand it that way, and we ask ourselves that, so how can we try and develop an excellent spirit if we are going to be excellent? First of all, let me first define this word blemish. A blemish is nothing more than a spot, a stain, or a mark that cannot be erased. The fact is that all men and women are blemished. We were all born blemished by sin. The spot of the world that clings on to us and the mark of sin that is on our head. And so if we were to talk about excellence, the Lord's way, the first thing that we need to do is to get rid of the blemish that is on us. And how do we get rid of that blemish, friends? This can only be accomplished by repenting of your sins, by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and the personal Savior, and by surrendering your life to him through the act of salvation. Because it is only the blood of Jesus that can wash away that blemish that can wash away that sin. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing blood? Are you washed by the blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? That is the first step, friends. If we want to be excellent, it is impossible to be excellent unless we have been to Jesus. And we are in Jesus. Because the word of God tells us that remain in me. And I, in, and if you remain in me, you will do what? You will bear much fruit. 
So we cannot bear fruit of excellence unless we are in Christ. Let me hope that all of us are in Christ. That is number one. Number two, if you have an excellent spirit within you, there is always going to be, uh, you know, James argues that faith without action is dead. Excellence in our heart without an outward sign of excellence is dead. If you are excellent, you are going to be able to affect everyone around you in some way. And you are going to help those around you to reach higher, to reach greater ground, to be more committed, to be more loving, to be more hardworking. A person who is excellent is infectious. That person is able to affect the lives and touch the lives of those around him or her. It is impossible to be excellent and you lock yourself down in your house and say, let me keep my excellence here. Praise the Lord. The Bible says that Daniel was also, this is the third point about excess. It says that Daniel was also skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge. Even as a young man, Daniel had the ability to use what he had learned for the best purposes. And to me, this speaks volumes of the fact that we should learn our lessons well from the word of God and also from what we are doing here at the university so that we can be able to become teachers and we can be able to use what we have learned to change the lives of those around us. Of course, if we think about learning and if we think about it in a spiritual sense, you know there are some people, some of us who have been born again, and if we say we are born again, if I asked how many of us are born again, all of us would put up our hands and would say praise the Lord. But one of the greatest crises that the church faces today is that we have skin-deep Christians. You know, according to the census, about more than 80% of Ugandans confessed themselves to be Christ-believing Christians. But how come that if you look at all our walks of life, everything that we do is corrupt? We are corrupt to the extent that even when we are burying somebody that, like a right honorable speaker of parliament, the budget that we make, no one can believe huh, that it is a true budget. Can you imagine? At a time of mourning, we have reached an extent where we cannot trust each other. And, one of, and all of those are Christians, by the way. The budget was drawn by Christians. It might even have been done in the church. <laughs> and we have even prayed for the, for the budget. But look at what is happening. And the reason why we are skinny deep Christians is that we are still drinking milk. We are still drinking milk and we are still taking Witabix. Eh? We have not taken cassava. Eh? Cassava, gospel cassava. We have not taken gospel, uh, we have not taken gospel sweet potatoes. Let me give you an example. My daughter there is about one year and about four months. And uh, about two months ago, we weaned her off breast milk. The reason why we did that is that she had stopped eating anything else other than breast milk. And you know at that age, breast milk is not sufficient for her. Because there are certain ingredients that are known in breast milk that she needs. And so painfully, we had to win her. But there are certain Christians here who have spent years and years as Christians but they have never wind. They only hear the word of God when they are in community hour. And the next time they are going to hear is on Sunday, if we are lucky, and they go to church. That's why one time when Bishop Obetia was uh, teaching us, he told us that, you know, in Kampala, for example, when you hear 77 dogs, you know the 77 dogs at uh, Miracle Center, you find the same Christians, they are there, they, they are there. And then when we start dogs here in Mukono, those same Christians will come to Mukono and they are always looking for miracles. They are always looking for a man or woman of God. They are always moving around and around. 
and each time you make an altar call, the same Christians are the ones who put up their what? Their hands and they get saved and they get saved again and again and again. They can get saved like 100 times. Why? Because when they get saved, they don't take time to study the word of God. Because the word of God is the one that can help us to grow in knowledge. It is, the, the, it is only when we apply ourselves to reading and studying the word of God that we can grow in our knowledge and understanding. It is only then that we can develop an excellent spirit. It is impossible. In Makerere, when we used to study in Makerere, for us, we used to say, we used to attend, for me, I did education at Makerere, BSc education. And when we, went, we used to go for these education courses, we used to say, we are learning by rumors. Do you know what it means to learn by rumors? That means that the room like this one is so full that you cannot enter the room, so you stay outside, and when the lecturer is teaching here, you have to ask your neighbor, what has she said? And then she tells you, so you are learning by what? By rumors. Most of us Christians are growing as Christians by rumors. We have not taken the time to devote ourselves to the studying and learning of God's word. Friends, one of the things that Daniel did as a young man was to study and to learn God's words. I wrote here and I said that you cannot leave off the milk of the word and develop an excellent spirit. You have to get it down. You have to dig deep. And you have to really apply yourself to study and learn and get into the real meat of God's word. And then, and only then, will you be able to develop an excellent spirit. Praise the Lord. We see, and I'm going to jump over that, but we see that again Daniel was not only studying the word of God, but we are told that he studied the science. And I can see, you know, I'm a scientist. And if you are going to appreciate nature, you know God, uh, Galileo Galilei argues rightly that God wrote to us in two languages. He wrote to us in the biblical language, and then he wrote to us in that language of nature. And if you want to understand what the Lord is saying, you look at nature. There is a lot that the Lord is saying through nature. Eh? A lot. You think about COVID-19. What has happened to COVID-19? How has it been defeated? Has it been by science, scientific invasion? Eh? Is it that we have applied ourselves to many vaccines that we are now here in class? God is saying something through nature. Not so. There is something that has happened in nature that the Lord already did at creation that has saved us. But Daniel took time to study science. You need to take time to study law. You need to take time to study business. You need to take time to study whatever it is that you are studying. Because an excellent person is able to learn those things. And when you have learned those things, he used them to serve nature, to serve the people, to serve the world. You know, we are told in, uh, in um, uh, Colossians 3 that whatever we do, we should do it as if we are serving what? The Lord. So how are you going to serve the Lord in this world? Some of you have come here and you are studying law. And that's very good. But as you are studying law, do it excellently. So that you can be the first class, a uh, first class student out of that law school. So that you can go on to be a judge. So that you can go on to influence in the medic, in the in the legal fraternity here in the country. So that you can become the chief justice. So that we can have the first chief justice in Uganda who prays in tongues and means what it is that they are saying. We need to have the first president in Uganda, who is going to start the day with a prayer meeting, and is the one who is leading the what? The worship. Wouldn't you want to have that? We need to have a worshiping president. We have to have a worshiping speaker. We need to have a worshiping uh, oh. head of URA, and so on and so forth. But how are we going to do it unless you become excellent? Friends, you need to become excellent. Because you are the hands that the Lord is going to use in order to influence the world in an excellent manner. Praise the Lord. 
Praise the Lord. Now, because of time, let me just go through because I don't want you to go away with nothing. I want, I have said that having seen the excellent spirit, the question still remains, how can we develop this excellent spirit in us? What is it that produces an excellent spirit? And if you read the book of Daniel, there are six traits of an excellent spirit that pop out like this that we could do well to learn from. Let me start with the first one, the first trait. If you're going to have an excellent spirit, one trait of an excellent spirit is a willingness to choose right when the environment is all wrong. A willingness to choose right when the environment is all wrong. That is what we call excellence. In Daniel chapter 1 verse 8, we read and, and we hear that, but Daniel re resolved that he would not defile himself with the king's food or with the wine that he drank. And therefore he asked the chief of the eunuchs to allow him not to defile himself. Friends, we had four teenagers from Judah who are committed to God and they refused to partake of that food that was dedicated to idols. And Daniel and his three friends, finding themselves in a new environment, they refused to compromise. They maintained their old convic convictions at a personal, great personal risk of punishment and rejection. And so one thing that we need to do if we are to develop an excellent spirit is to choose right when the environment is all wrong. By the way, how many people, for example, in a low class of 400 people, how many people get first classes? Because the first class is what you would call excellent. Eh? Ever since I came here, I have only graduated one student who has gotten the first class in what? In law. And that means that student was excellent, isn't it? And that means that that student must not have been following the crowd. He had the willingness to choose something different when the rest of the other people are choosing something else. So to be excellent, you have to have the ability to choose right when the environment is all wrong. Praise the Lord. The second one is a willingness to thank God when blessings come your way. A willingness to thank God when blessings come your way. Or a willingness to take no credit for what God has done. And you know, the Christians of today, we have a weakness. Uh, when they tell us, oh, John, you have done very well. There is this common saying, to God be the glory. You know, that phrase is meant to give credit to God. Eh? But as we are saying it, we don't mean it. As you are saying, to God be the glory, you are, you are dusting yourself and saying, have you seen me? And you are saying, to God be the what? The glory. Remember in chapter 2, when King Nebuchadnezzar had that dream, and King Nebuchadnezzar was tough, because after dreaming he said, I want somebody to tell me the dream, and then interpret the dream. You remember that one? And no one in the king's palace could interpret the dream. And the angry Nebuchadnezzar ordered for the killing of all the men. But Daniel told him that, hold on. Don't be so impatient. Give me some time and the Lord will show me what he means. And we see in verse 19 of chapter 2 that the secret is revealed to Daniel. But if you read chapter 2 verses 19, 20, 21, and 22, you will hear. In 19 they said, then the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision of the night. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, to whom belong wisdom and might. He changes times and seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understand. Praise the Lord. A person who is excellent, is an excellent spirit, has the ability and the willingness to thank God when blessings come our way. Are we excellent? The third one. A willingness to choose companions who fear God above every other opinion. I don't know who your friends are, 
But one thing that will make you excellent is the willingness to choose friends who fear God above every other opinion. And if you look at chapter 3, this is where you see Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, friends of Daniel, who were bold. They refused to compromise. And with poison and calm, they chose to die rather than bargain their testimony. They said to the king that these men or king, these people were choosing them, pay no attention to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image. They said that. And we can imagine the pressure these young boys were under to compromise. Everything in front of them, the king, the furnace, uh, uh, the, the furnace had been heated how many times more? Seven times more. The music, their compatriots, their competitors, all were there, but they refused to worship any other god other than God. Praise the Lord. And what happened when they did that? The Lord showed up with them in the furnace. He shielded them from the harm. You remember the people who threw them in the furnace? They all died. But for them, they did not what? And uh, as a result, they were promoted. Friends, if we are going to be excellent, it matters whom you are working with and whom you are doing life with. In Luganda, we have a saying that Mbulida goita na ye Meaning, you tell me the people you are always hanging around with, and I will tell you what your character is like. Which kind of people are you hanging around with? For me, when I used to hang around, I used to want to hang around with people who are far better than me, so that I could be the one draining them, rather than them draining me. Some of you, you look for the weakest links. Some of you are, are saved with the testimony but you're always at those bars and you are drinking and you're saying, I'm going to minister in the bar and you are there in the bar and your friends are there, they are doing all kinds of things and you are ministering friends. As you are ministering in that bar, your friends will minister to you and you will go to the other side. Praise the Lord. Trait number four. This is hard, number four. A willingness to speak the truth in love even when it hurts. A willingness to speak the truth in love, even when it hurts. This is in, verse four, in chapter 4. You remember in chapter 4, Daniel had grown fond of Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar has another dream, this weird dream. And now in this dream, the Lord is going to punish Nebuchadnezzar. And he comes to him in verses 25 to 27. It says that you shall be driven from among men, and he is able to tell uh, 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 Nebuchadnezzar what is going to happen in fact in one of the verses it says it is you O king Daniel applied that point without ambiguity instead of reaching for a general point of saying we could maybe all do a little more with humility Daniel brought the truth in love and that is very similar to the way prophet Nathan said it to king David when he went to confront him and told him, you are that man. An excellent spirit requires that we are willing to speak the truth in love even when it hurts. And the interesting bit when I was preparing is that the, the, the truth, you know sometimes people are very eager to speak the truth to others but it's an excellent person speaks that truth first and foremost to themselves. Huh? You start by speaking that truth to yourself. Sometimes those people who are excellent, for example, those people who love soccer, all those excellent footballers, the excellent uh, uh, coaches and uh, managers, they will tell you, I am my worst critic. Have you ever heard that? An excellent spirit requires that we speak the truth even when it hurts. Five. And a willingness to use God for, uh, a willingness to not use God for personal gain. A willingness not to use God for personal gain. Friends, this message I get from chapter 5. When we look at, at Belshazzar's party, God writes a message on the wall, and the host is deeply troubled, and then they want to bribe Daniel so that he can be able to interpret this dream. But in verse 17, Daniel says, 
let your gifts be for yourself and give your rewards to another. Nevertheless, he goes on to interpret, an excellent spirit is unselfish. An excellent spirit serves God for God's benefit. An excellent spirit builds people. It builds churches. It builds universities. And uh, our, 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 our motto for the Bishop Taka was a very good one. It was called to serve. An excellent spirit is called to serve. Praise the Lord. And finally, the final trait that you get in chapter 6 is a willingness to pray and seek the Lord daily in the midst of a crisis or a calm. A willingness to pray regardless of the situation. You pray to the Lord daily either in a midst of a crisis or when everything is calm. Regardless, you want to pray. You remember chapter 6, uh, Daniel is there with the co-workers. They become jealous of him. They plot, but then they say that we shall not find any charge against Daniel unless we find it against him concerning the law of God. But this man, Daniel, refused. Daniel, excellent as he was, instead of choosing not to pray, he chose to pray. Daniel refused to give in to the government the measure of obedience that belonged to God alone. Others perhaps considered it risky for Daniel to pray, as was his custom. But Daniel knew that the safest thing he could do was to radically obey God. Friends, I want to end with this quote from McLean. He says, Unless you are prepared to be in the minority, and now and then be called narrow, fanatic, and to be laughed at by men because you will not do what they do, but abstain and resist, then there is little chance of you ever making much of your Christian profession. Let me repeat it in terms of excellence. Unless you are prepared to be in the minority, and now and then be called narrow, fanatic, and to be laughed at by men and women, because you will not do what they do, but abstain and resist, then there is little chance of you ever making much of your Christian profession and ever becoming excellent. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Loving Father, 